non-essential Italian horror movies that are exceptionally good. With only a handful of films remaining from the 1920s, it might seem like the Italian horror genre is long lost due to bourgeois comedy and censorship. But don't forget, the 1960s brought with it several developments in this realm, which filmmakers like Dario Argento, Mario Bava, and Lucio Fulci contributed to. Mario Bava kick-started the new wave in Italian horror, which witnessed the flourishing of gothic, dark, and violent slasher films with a distinct Italian flavor. Not to mention, Hollywood saw several collaborations of Giallo, which pertains to the Italian horror thriller genre with elements of slasher and crime. This video will explore a few of these Italian horror movies that are exceptionally good. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Jesus. <laughs> Demons, 1985. This Italian movie is a collaboration between Dario Argento and horror veteran Mario Bava's son, Lamberto Bava. It is a demonic tale based on the premise of art imitating life. It portrays a group of guests who are invited for lunch and asked to attend a screening of a horror movie that brings naturalism to life. Things soon take a turn for the worse when a simple lunch invitation turns into the movie screening from hell. This possession drama turned zombie flick is a remarkable piece of work from some of the greatest horror minds in Italian cinema. It portrays everything good about cheesy B-grade films and gives you the thrill of a lifetime with its roller coaster ride of gore, rock music, and special effects. Some viewers might think of it as a silly rendition of psychological horror from the 70s. Nevertheless, it contains an out-of-this-world climax. Furthermore, it unapologetically executes a gothic undertone in an absurd manner. The impact that this film creates without a coherent plot or character depth is truly commendable. In fact, it fits right into the era, since the 80s were an entire decade worth of mindless movies becoming all-time hits. <laughs> De la Morte de la More, 1994. Popularly known as Cemetery Man in English, this film is a comedy horror masterpiece directed by Michel Sauvi and based on the novel of the same name by Tiziano Sclavi. It narrates the tale of the besieged caretaker of a small Italian cemetery who searches for love while he defends himself from the bizarre occurrences that take place every day. Will he finally find love and be free of this nightmare? This film reflects the popular Sclavian philosophy in Italian comics. It plays on the duality between love and death, a popular trope in Italian cinema. It boldly walks a thin line between horror comedy and European art films. On the one hand, it appeals to the ludicrous zombie fans who enjoy blood and gore. On the other, it is a thought-provoking film with poetic direction that could get the folks of a drama society going. Michelle Sauvi portrays unmistakably an experiment of visual flair. While it might seem like a fun B-movie initially, the visual complexity confirms otherwise. Overall, Sauvi makes up for the distinct lack of horror in the 90s with his excellent work. The book! <laughs> Inferno, 1980. Inferno is an Italian supernatural horror film directed by Dario Argento. It stars Irene Miracle, Leigh McCloskey, and Eleonora Giori in lead roles. It revolves around an American college student in Rome and his sister in New York who investigate a series of deaths in both locations. As the siblings get deeper into the investigations, they discover a shocking truth about their respective homes. Argento goes old school by incorporating themes of witchcraft, ancient alchemy, and death in this film. 
the Gothic medieval atmosphere contrasted with the modern settings brings about a new change to the otherwise bloody 80s. It is appropriately spooky with multicolored moments of silence. Moreover, Keith Emerson's organ music perfectly complements the gothic mood. What viewers enjoy most about this film is that its plot is mostly self-contained and rarely refers to the real world, without implying that it is unrealistic in any way. Although Dario Argento abandoned the idea of a coherent storyline for this film, he still managed to create a masterpiece with an aesthetic set and ambient mood. The Beyond, 1981. This is an Italian Southern Gothic supernatural horror film. It portrays a woman from New York who inherits a hotel in rural Louisiana and plans to renovate it for a public reopening. Soon, strange events begin to occur as the workers start becoming the victims of freak accidents. When she investigates these unusual deaths, she discovers a frightening truth about her newly inherited property. Also known as La Dilla in Italian, this film portrays a volatile shift from slasher-style suspense to melancholy. Viewers can see the hint of existentialism in Lucio Fulci's well-acclaimed work. It has top-notch special effects that make the death scenes look very realistic, and the cinematography contributes to the gothic atmosphere. It contains several explicitly violent scenes that serve as a commentary on the artist's censorship and repression. The score fits in perfectly with the overall sinister vibe. Fulci drew inspiration for Antoine St. John's character, Schweik, from the controversial French artist Antonin Artaud. This film is a portrayal of Fulci's idea of violence being an Italian art and resonates well with the concept of spiritual horror. Due to the loose ends in its narrative and sudden shifts in tone, it caters to a niche audience that will never reach the fancy of a mainstream viewership. <laughs> Suspiria, 1977. Suspiria is a well-renowned Italian supernatural horror film directed by Dario Argento. Jessica Harper stars as an American ballet student who, after transferring into a prestigious German dance academy, is faced with several unpleasant events. She soon realizes that her school is the front for a supernatural conspiracy. Will she be able to carry on? This film is the father of all gothic Italian horror films. It is Dario Argento's signature supernatural masterpiece, which set in stone his reputation as one of the greatest modern horror filmmakers. Its setting, which consists of light and saturated colors, successfully draws viewers in, creating the perfect atmosphere. Argento contrasts this with the use of bold primary colors during explicit scenes. Viewers' central aspect of appreciation for this film is how he takes a simple plot and turns it into one of the most memorable Jalo classics. Besides colorful cinematography, its soundtrack is a modern horror score that allows viewers to have an eerie experience. Dario Argento's fairy tale vision and choice of in camera special effects made this film extremely convincing, despite its logical flaws. The House with Laughing Windows, 1976. This is an Italian giallo film co-written and directed by Giuseppe Avati. It revolves around Stefano, a young man hired by the mayor of a small village in Italy to restore a local mural of St. Sebastian. Meanwhile, his friend Antonio investigates Bono Legnani, the original painter of the mural. During his search, Antonio uncovers a disturbing truth and has to decide what to do with the information. Despite not having contributed much to Italian horror, former jazz musician Giuseppe Avati has done a remarkable job with this film. Although it doesn't reach the artistic heights of Dario Argento, it succeeds in building a sense of dread within viewers through the central character's isolation. 
The supporting cast all appear to be creepy, gnarly, dwarf-like creatures without character depth. The film illustrates some unsettling imagery along with the visual blood and gore. In addition, it has excellent camera work, which emphasizes an eerie vibe of the characters being watched at all times. It explores the theme of an innocent person eventually discovering the terrifying secrets of a community consumed by evil. Dark Waters, 1993. Also known as Dead Waters, this is a horror film directed by Mariano Baino. It narrates the story of Elizabeth, who is tortured by horrible visions from her childhood. She travels to a mysterious island to learn the truth about her past, where she comes across a malevolent order of nuns. She soon finds herself stuck on the sinister island with no way of leaving. How will she escape? This movie is a prime example of how atmosphere alone can contribute to a high-quality horror film. Besides its setting, the film's camera work makes it terrifying. You won't know the effect a close-up can have until it looks you right in the eye. It has a unique yet disturbing plot, which Baino executes in his own style and portrays beautifully shot scenes. It also contains extremely violent sequences that are open to interpretation. Remarkably enough, this film has fewer dialogues, which lets viewers absorb its elements via visuals and sounds, making it a more authentic experience. It prioritizes style over substance, which makes it a solid watch for avid horror movie fans and not just for someone seeking cheap thrills. Phenomena, 1985. This is an Italian horror film starring Jennifer Connelly and Donald Pleasance. It's directed by Dario Argento. The plot focuses on a girl at a remote boarding school in Switzerland who discovers an astonishing truth about herself, which she uses to catch a dangerous serial killer, murdering women in and around the school. This giallo film has Dario Argento written all over it. Donald Pleasance and Jennifer Connelly stole the show with their performances, especially the latter, who kicked ass as a teenage actor. Its stunning cinematography amongst the Swiss Alps makes all the gruesome scenes of blood and gore look even more appealing due to the contrast. Moreover, Claudio Simonetti presents an electronic score that takes viewers' breath away especially the haunting soundtrack with the 80s synthesizer and choral soprano vocals. Argento has artistically portrayed this film like a dark fairy tale with surreal elements in the name of horror, similar to his 1977 masterpiece, Suspiria. Story-wise, this film takes the cake since it's a blend of all of Argento's signature features combined into one thrilling piece of work. Stage Fright, 1987. Stage Fright is an Italian slasher film and director Michelle Salvi's debut. It presents a group of stage actors who lock themselves in a theater to rehearse for their upcoming musical production. Unfortunately, they are unprepared for what they find in the theater that shocks them to their bones. For those of you who are unaware, Michelle Salvi is none other than Dario Argento's protege, which is evident from this film. Salvi uses interesting camera angles in it to portray the multiple points of view. What viewers appreciate about him is that he can illustrate the most grotesque things with utmost class and finesse. However, this factor doesn't make it any less of a scary slasher. The film is appreciated for its fast pace and, of course, the usual gore. Unlike most filmmakers, including his mentor, Salvi has succeeded in presenting a coherent storyline for this film, which is a skill most Italian directors lack. Michel Salvi did excellent work for his debut, even if he drew certain factors from Argento and Fulci. Overall, it is an underrated gem that deserves to be seen by horror fans worldwide. Nightmare City, 1980. 
Nightmare City is a sci-fi horror film directed by Umberto Lenzi. It narrates the tale of a local reporter and his wife who try to escape from herds of bloodthirsty zombies in a European city. These zombies are none other than undead people who have been exposed to nuclear radioactivity. While the military is fighting a war of attrition with these relentless flesh eaters, humanity hangs in the balance. For a zombie flick, this movie came out much later than the wave that was unleashed during the 60s. Luckily, Lindsay didn't come empty-handed. He added a new twist to the species and made them self-sufficient and competent in using tools and weaponry. He also adheres to the cliches of zombie films to keep viewers happy. Therefore, it contains blood, gore, cheesy dialogue, and just enough nudity. With regards to technical aspects such as camera work and lighting, this film is on par with other 80s B-movies. However, Lindsay never deemed it to be a pure zombie film. Instead, he claimed it was a radiation sickness film. Viewers' popular opinion entails that if one does not have prior love or knowledge of low-budget Italian horror films, they might not enjoy this one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.